This show is brought to you in part by viewers like you who join the Patreon or become YouTube members. Thank you. And if you could, hit the like button and subscribe if you want more Browns-focused content. Browns are a three-win football team. We all want them to be a better football team next year. So how are they going to do that? First things first, the first thing you have to do if you're a Browns fan is address the salary cap situation, right? Now, while this salary cap situation may not be the mess that I think that some people make it out to be, um, that it actually is a little bit more manageable, people give credit for, it is a situation that's going to limit you a little bit, right? So... First, let's create some space for 2025. You can see right now, the Browns are 15 million in the red. Now, I think one of the first moves that's going to happen is a trade for Greg Newsom, right? You trade Greg Newsom, that's 13 million already, boom, taken off the cap here, right? Um, then you look for Joe Batonio. Right, like he's likely going to retire. Now, if he retires, it kind of restructures his deal. We can kind of roll it like that. And then all of a sudden now, with just those two moves, you're in the positive. All right, so Joe Batonio, Greg Newsom, that gets you into the positive. Depending on how aggressive you want to be, right, you could do a post-June 1st cut Jack Conklin, and now you're at $20 million in cat space. Um, you know, and so on and so forth. You're going to let go of Jet Wills. That doesn't really change anything. But Juan Thornhill, you would likely post June 1st. Cut, bam, now you're at $24 million in cap space. You could restructure Deshaun Watson extend, and extend the cap hits of him longer, but knowing he's going to be gone by 2026 and do that, that way, if you want, that can give you up to $58 million in free aid and cap space here. Um, all right. So let's say the Browns designate Jack Conklin and Juan Thornhill as their two post-June 1st cuts, um, which would make sense. And then they could cut Ethan Posick if they wanted to before camp and save a little bit of money that way. I think that they likely, unless they feel like they can get um, one of the top free agents that I have listed for center, they'll probably roll with the Ethan Posick up until camp and let Whipler uh, compete with him. But let's say they get a good inkling. They feel like they can get somebody in the market and Luke Whipler's making good recovery. You go ahead, you cut him, and then bam, you have $26 million in cap space. Let's say you cut Dalvin Tomlinson, you can open up some money that way for next year if you really wanted to. Um, there's a number of ways the Browns can go about freeing up some space. Cam Thomas, 1.4 you save here. Sam Kamara, about 1.1 that you save here, right? So, boom. Now you're at $32 million in cap space. You haven't really had to give up anybody that you weren't thinking about giving up um, before the season started, and now you have some room. Another thing to consider when it comes to cash space is how contracts are structured. $32 million in cash space for the Browns already, and this is without a restructure of Miles Garrett's contract. This is without a restructure of Dalvin Tomlinson's contract. This is without a restructure of Deshaun Watson's contract. If you factor in just Miles Garrett and, and Dalvin Tomlinson's restructure, then we're talking about $40 million in cap space. And then if you do things like extend Miles Garrett or extend David and Joku this offseason, which probably is likely then you're going to free up even more and more money. This is why I say the salary cap is flexible. It is not as dire of a situation as it looks like, but let's just imagine the Browns are in that 39, $40 million range of cap space uh, available to them that they've had the last few years. How would they go about spending it? Who would be a good top? Who would be good players to go after? That's what this video is about on the offensive side of the ball. So let's look at some guys that I think would be good options for the Cleveland Browns on the offensive side of the ball. 
Running it back, this is real simple. I don't think there's anybody running back wise that makes sense for the Cleveland Browns to go for in free agency. Maybe Najee Harris, but really nah. Um, the draft, there's almost too many to list. This draft is chock full of running backs at every round, at every option, of every type. If you want to run it back, this is your year to go get running back. Now let's talk about interior offensive line, which I think is a big deal for this team. You got a ton of options this year to upgrade the interior. Um, if you look at free agency, Trey Smith from Kansas City, their starting guard, 26 years old, will be available. Everybody that I have listed in a free, as a free agent option will also be under 30 because I don't think the Browns are in a position to sign somebody over 30. So Trey Smith would be an option. We got to see what the market is for him, how expensive he's going to be. If it gets over eight, 10 million, then you're going to be out of that. Makai Beckton, you could probably get for about six million APY uh, average per year. You can get Pat McCarry for even cheaper. He's a guard slash tackle. He's played guard. He's been fine at guard for Baltimore. Tevin Jenkins is somebody who was a famous, very popular from the Brett Coleman video that he did on him. A uh, right tackle prospect, but has turned into a bit of a guard. And I think he'd be exactly what the Browns need, a powerful, strong guard. That's Tevin Jenkins. He's very violent, too, off the ball. Uh, Will Hernandez, a very strong guard. Not the biggest guy in the world, but a strong guard. And if you're looking for a center, Josh Myers from Green Bay, again, under 30, will be somebody who's available. All of those would be good options, starting options for the Cleveland Browns to go after. If you're looking at the draft, Will Campbell is a day one option. Tyler Booker, Donovan Jackson, Charles Grant. You're talking about day two, day three with those guys. Um, and then Parker Brailsford and Jonah Mahim are, are round three guys that I think will be available at the center position as well. So the Browns, I think their biggest hole is the interior of this offensive line. And I think it's a good thing that there is a wealth of options here for them, a wealth of players to go after. And it's a good need to have when you're talking about trying to keep costs down because interior offensive linemen, center and guards just aren't that expensive, right? So you can go value shopping for a guard and find you a guard. There's going to be other positions where that's not the case, but I think value shopping for a guard will be useful. Let's look at tight end. Um, tight end, I think Brevin Jordan would be somebody you would look at in free agency that would make sense to take over for Jordan Aikens. Um, Tyler Warren, Colson Loveland, Harold Fainer Jr., those are like real deal tight ends that you would hope to take over from Njoku over time um, that I think are going to be good players in the NFL as well. So that's tight end. I don't think the Browns going to be really looking at tight end that hard. I know a lot of people have tackle on the mind. Um, if the Browns are looking for tackle, there's two options really in free agency, really only one starter that I think they're going to be able to afford. Um, and it's going to make sense for their timeline. Garrett Bowles is 32. I don't think that makes sense for the Browns timeline, but I do think Dan Moore makes sense for the Cleveland Browns. Um, now don't just judge him based off of what you've seen of him in Pittsburgh, because all we've seen of Dan Moore is getting beat by Miles Garrett one-on-one, but that's going to happen to any tackle that gets one-on-one with Miles Garrett, right? Dan Moore is a solid enough tackle prospect. He could go on both sides. You could put Dewan at left, put him at right, put Dan Moore at, at right or at, at left, then you could put Dewan at right. Um, it gives you some flexibility, and it gives you a starter, and he will certainly be a lot cheaper than keeping Jack Conklin and younger and then more reliable to be healthy. If you want to go in the draft, this year there's three first-round, second-round draft prospects, Kelvin Banks, Cam Williams, and Josh Simmons. Um, Josh Simmons is the most interesting one to me because he's probably going to fall because of his ACL injury, but he was probably playing the best tackle of anybody in the country at Ohio State before he suffered that injury. All right, let's look at wide receiver options here, man. Free agency, Elijah Moore is going to be real attractive. He's a cheap player to bring in. Um, you could go with a more established player like a Christian Kirk or a Hollywood Brown. Um, I honestly wouldn't mind just bringing back Elijah Moore if I'm the Cleveland Browns here. If we're going in the draft, Luther Burton, uh, Ted McMillan, those are guys who are going to go at the top of the draft. If you're looking at back end, first round, second round guys, Isaiah Bond, Elik Aominer, um, Emeka Abuka, and then like a true second, third round guys like Xavier Restrepo. So some wide receivers there all in the mode of what Andrew Barry and Kevin Stefanski seem to like for this offense. 
all would make sense there. You can even add some of the like reclamation projects that you have, right? Your Traylon Burks or something like that that I mentioned in the video before into options here. Now let's look at quarterback. Where are the Browns upgrade options at quarterbacks, which is free agency in the draft? Um, you could trade for like Kirk Cousins, maybe uh, Aaron Rodgers hits free agency and is open to coming to Cleveland. But I think it's really going to come down to these three options. You can keep Jameis. You can sign Sam Donald for a couple of years, or you can roll the dice with Justin Fields. I see the value in all three of those options if I'm the Cleveland Browns. Um, Jameis, because there's already familiarity there. You've seen him be successful in this offense. You're not guessing. Sam Darnold, a little bit younger. You feel like he's not going to be as much as a gunslinger as Jameis Winston, so you can kind of keep him under control. I get wanting to go there. Justin Fields, he's an athlete. He could put some different kind of pressure on these linebackers that you like to stress. Um, and I can see the appeal there with Justin Fields. Or any of those three options, I would be fine with. Um, and then in the draft, you could go Jalen Milrow. You have to understand if you draft Jalen Milrow, you are not drafting who he is today. You are drafting who he's going to be tomorrow, right? Jalen Milrow is the Jordan Love pick of this draft. Like if you take Jalen Milrow, you are not starting him for a year or two. You just got to accept that. This is somebody who has not been able to be in an offense, the same offensive coordinator for more than one year at Alabama, you just got to normalize and, and get him into a regular place and let him adjust his mechanics. Um, the upside could be tremendous with Jalen Milrow, but definitely somebody you have the understanding that you're going to wait a year or two on before you play. Carson Beck, I think, makes a ton of sense for what the Browns want to do. And I think if he's there late second, early third, I think the Browns are jumping on that. Uh, good enough athlete, has good arm talent, knows how to play in play action, knows how to do the stuff that you would think Stefanski can do. Like, I can see the Browns looking at him and saying, hey, we could do the same thing that the the Broncos are doing with Bo Nix for a couple of years with Carson Beck, for sure. Um, and that would be an option for them. But those are my upgrade paths for the Browns when you look at free agency and the draft, how they're going to open up some of that money, all of that. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you have some options that are available for this team to upgrade that, you, that are different from what I've put up here? Um, and tell me why that's the case. Y'all have a great day. Have some better night. Peace.